Hey guys, welcome back to Only the Best Fantasy Novels. And today I want to talk about the book that broke the world. Mark Lawrence's most, the, the second entry in Mark Lawrence's most mind bending science fiction fantasy series yet. Um, he really ramps up the nature with this one, to say, um, to say the least. And it left me with even more of a fatigue brain than the first one did. I'm not gonna lie. It, this book is rough. But the good kind of rough. So, Ever and Livia, our main characters from the first book, have been split up, set on different paths that will take them through very different trials and challenges. But the library, the, um, the location that's at the heart and soul of this universe, it has an inexorable pull on all things, all societies, everywhere, that all planes and all worlds that it touches. And... Um, their journey will bring them back literally across time and space before they can meet again. Um, so that sounds quite romancy, but uh, that's I, I think that's like a, a good enough taste of what to expect in this book without really getting into the meat of it. Because um, as you guys know, like I try to avoid discussing spoilers of any sort. Um, but anyway, what did I think of this? Um, Mark Lawrence gave me a headache <laughs> with the first book in this um, trilogy. And in this one, he, he makes me feel like a troglodyte trying to read hieroglyphics at times. Um, this book is it's complex and it's challenging. Um, in, the, in the way that it just kind of, it's very relentless. Like it just charges onward, like you, ne you never get a chance to catch your breath. You just go from scene to scene to scene to scene to scene. And they're all high octane, they're all action packed. They're all high intensity. Um, we're along the along this like very high intensity story. We're um, we're forced to keep track of so many different characters, so much lore and so much world building and and so much um, so so many details about this story to fully understand and appreciate what's happening. That um, that it, it's. It's a challenge to read, and it, it, it's, a, it's a very satisfying challenge to read and to follow. And that's before we even get to the crazy parts of the story, such as, like, there, there's, like, a, the sequence of events, I think the best way to describe it is diffracted, because, um, like, this is a novel that plays very heavily with time. Our character, our different groups of characters, they experience time differently. Based on how, based on their individual, ex based on their group experience with the library, and the rooms that they enter, and these kind of things, and what they do there, so they um, it really messes with you because the timeline is just so different for these characters, and they just shift and weld and weave in between each other, and um, when they meet, like what what would have been days ago for someone might have been years ago for another, and they they, they kind of have to. Um, reconciliate this difference it's um it, it's just a lot it, it's just a lot to keep track of and that's before we even get to and, and that's just the time travel aspect that's before we even get into like the paradoxes and these kind of things that that are involved in this um this novel <coughs> that, that that just it, the, that just lit to this novel i should say um every, everything's there like everything is there for you to understand is it's not like a Malazan book where you kind of have to figure out what's going on it's just that it's it's such a challenge to piece together everything it's like you have a, a jigsaw puzzle that's you have all the parts that, but they're, they're all messed up and you need to figure it out and every time you think you have a piece it's like the pieces keep moving on you <laughs> um that, 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 that might be like the simplest way to kind of describe what reading this book felt like at times but it, like i said it's challenging in a good way it was fun to kind of keep track and piece together all this crazy stuff that's happening um but much like the forest book I, I would feel like i barely get my grip on where an event is happening like on, on the context of an event before like the scene shifts and my, I, I get my legs pulled out from under me basically um and it's made doubly so in this book because we get uh we get new povs we get new characters we get a new race we get um we get a further expansion of the lore of, of this world um we get 
we we just we just get a really big uh, like an expansion we get and uh, the most telling part is the additional povs because at one point after a while it this book feels like barely contained chaos and um to, j just to keep track of and it's just so fun to read really fun like i, I enjoyed myself tremendously from start to finish with this um so who are these new povs we have selcha and hell uh, a new race a new a new um pair of main characters to follow in a time period that we don't necessarily know of and what they experience is significant what their bearing is on the trilogy on, on the events of the trilogy so far we have no idea what their um what's the the purpose of even seeing this play out no clue it's not a question that gets answered until much later um so at the start it just reads kind of like a random vignette um in the book um <sighs> We get new. P we also get new POVs for characters who've been previously introduced. Um, when these characters were first introduced, they, they were kind of like stereotypical, stereotypical archetypes. Um, but I, the new POVs kind of flesh them out and help us see them in a new light, and it, it kind of made things interesting because they're both um, they, they're both characters who quickly become interesting even if our initial introduction to them wasn't quite so glowing um, and they made they made for great reading um, especially given their their particular natures and their roles in in their different groups and their their um, and how the, the, and, their, and their bearing on events I should say um, it, it especially um, it especially comes into play because we have um like we start to get a cross pollination of the different groups that we've been introduced so far and what's tell telling about this cross pollination is that we kind of get to see the impact that Eva and Olivia their relationship has um their relationship has had on their on their acquaintances on their friends and we see the effects of this ripple through in the decisions that they that the groups take when the cross pollination happens, um, but yeah, like like I mentioned, this book it, it kind of feels like a run-in action sequence, honestly, from start to finish. I kind of feel like there's very few chapters where so like characters weren't running for their life or running to try to get to a objective, or there wasn't um or they weren't under threat of some kind. Uh, it, it it's very high octane and critical information comes in and you 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 you've kind of you're kind of all amped up on, on what's happening and then this information comes in and it's like wait I need to think about this what was the ramifications of this holy crap and it, it's you you kind of start getting whiplash I, well me at least I started to feel like my brain was getting whiplash after a while but like it like I said it, it's just fun it's it just it's an aspect of the book that just makes it really fun to read um, maybe, maybe the confusion is all just on me because, like, I, uh, I record my videos at 3 o'clock in the morning. I haven't had a single straight night's sleep in the last year and a half because of my particular circumstances. So maybe the, maybe this, like, heightened confusion and all of that is just me being hyper-exhausted or whatever. But... I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it tremendously, even if I did have to go back and read some sections to try and understand what the hell I just read. Um, but yeah, it, it's like if if it wasn't clear at this point, um, with everything that I've said so far, I'll just say it bluntly: this is not a light novel. This is not something you pick up for popcorn entertainment. It's very cha it's it's challenging. It's unique, and it will make you think. It will it will jar you back and forth you will have to focus on it and it rewards you immensely for it well it rewarded me at least um mark mark Lawrence continues to give you so much to think about in this um, book Reg just regarding knowledge and the power that it gives you to do great things or to do terrible things um and it makes you think think about knowledge that isn't tempered by wisdom and experience um and character because for me like knowledge having knowledge is one thing but it and you'll often hear it said also wisdom is um 
like larger tourism or whatever but for me the other two key components of that are character and I can't remember what the other one was what I just said um, yeah you get you get my point there, there's it's not like knowledge for knowledge's sake isn't necessarily a good thing and that's something that the book kind of um, touches on one thing I did like think about reading this is that for me the library is kind of like an analogy for the internet. Um, it, it's kind of the same. Like there's just this vast, completely um, this vast maze of information that you um, that you can in, that you can live in. Um, whether it's accurate, whether it's completely false, there you any form of it, any any form any, any combination of words that letters can form you'll find in there from a wide wide variety of cultures and for all we know species um, can be found on it and um, you kind of have to navigate your way and uh, decide if this knowledge is um, is something that will amplify your life or if it will have negative impacts on you and it's um it, it's the reason why I kind of bring it up is because, like, it, it's a conscious choice for everyone. Whether you decide to kind of, what, what what kind of content you consume and if you you want positive, uplifting things in your life or if you want negative. Um, given that negativity kind of tends to trend better, I would think that most people seem to like negativity in their life. But that's not me. My goal on this channel is just to, um, like, I, I'll, it's just to talk about books I love. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna post anything negative. Um because I, I refuse to contribute to the negativity in the world. But that but that's my personal philosophy. And and that's that that little tangent is just kind of how it's just an example of how this book just kind of gets you thinking, gets you going. Um and the, the and even on top of all of that, we have like the signature Mark Lawrence writing style. We have a lot of cut cutted verbiage. We um we have a lot of like these different things to th different things, random things to think about. Like each chapter begins with like a short quote, um, that by itself is an entire conversation starter. And then we get the shout outs. Um, my two favorite shout outs from this particular book is for Ook, the librarian from this world, the orangutan li librarian from this world, I should say. And um, and also we get a shout out to Mike Mo Michael Moorcock, Stan Lorne, in a different form. Much in the same way that Stan Lorne appears in different forms in Michael Moorcock's um, different books. Uh, so, um, all told, because this video is getting quite long now, I think I'll, I'll just wrap it up here. Um, also, this is a series that, it, it's one of those fantasy series that you can easily read it multiple times and it'll just enrich your life on, on those multiple readings because there's just so much to unpack and understand and think about over the course of it. It's a big, it, it continues to be a big departure from my, what Mark Lawrence has written in the past. Like, um, I loved, I loved, the Broken Empire trilogy. I love the Red Queen's Wire trilogy, but honestly, I was ambivalent at best to Book of the Ancestor and the the other one with um, with the fighting nuns. Like they they didn't quite do it for me that that way. So like for my clients to shift gears and give us this kind of story that's so different, so drastically different from what he's done in the past. It, for me, it's like it it kind of like brings to the forefront everything that we love about him. Um, just the way he writes, ju just the the thoughts he provokes, everything. Um, and he, the amazing thing about it is that he does it... There, there's not necessarily anything new in this book you could call grimdark, other than a par some particular moments that... Um, so as soon, soon as we introduce to that particular scene and the characters and, and the the miasma around that particular room, like you can tell the direction it's going to head in. So it wasn't particularly a big shock. Um, and it's actually something that's that I'm seeing crop up more and more in fantasy books these days. Um, but like, there's there's not this at its at its heart is um, is very much a love story, I would say. Um, 
a love story between two characters who just can't seem to um, get together <laughs> and the impact it has on their on on their lives and the and the lives around them because it does have an impact it's it's very prevalent in this book um but yeah so to sum it up absolutely fascinating very compelling a very challenging and a completely unforgettable experience reading this book um i loved it start to finish i can easily see myself rereading it multiple times and um I, given Mark Lawrence's typical pattern of writing books, he, I'm sure he's already completed the third book in this trilogy, and he's busy at work writing the first book in his next trilogy, which hopefully is a sequel series to this to this trilogy. Um, so the, the I like, I'm just, at this point I'm pretty much just counting down the days until next year, April, when the third book comes out. Even though nothing's been announced yet, that's just been his writing pattern for the last decade. He's, he's a very consistent guy in that regard. Um, but yeah, a series as epic and entertaining and wonderful as they come. Um, it, it, th these books are just a great example of why I love reading fantasy so much. There's just anything that can happen. Anything that can be imagined can happen. And... Um, it's quite clear that the best is yet to come, I think. So um, I think this is probably my longest book, my, my longest video of any single book yet. Um, if by some miracle you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.